Hi everybody! I have a follow-up session. It's a 60 minute home healing session and I'm gonna put a link to the the first one I did. It was a 30 minute session. It was really wild. The energy of this home space was unbelievable. So I had to go through a lot of energy distortions and a lot of layers of randomness um, in order to bring it into balance as best as I could in the time. So we're doing a follow-up session. I'm so curious to see what the energy is like. Um, I'm gonna read the goals here and then I'm gonna get started. Okay. All right, so this is a follow-up session for childhood home energy healing. Thank you, Abby, for the previous session on our childhood home. It was very intense and complex, and we didn't expect that at all. We would kindly like you to continue to heal this place. A few questions. Who is that mad scientist man? Is this a specific person or just energy of this space manifested as a mad scientist? Who are those dead bodies from the end of the first session? Okay, brace yourselves. I don't have answers to these questions. As of right now, I would say that mad scientist is a reflection of the energetic balance of the home. So energy balance can, can come through as looking like anything in order to uh, define the way that it feels. So, but that did feel like a real consciousness. And the reason why is because there was something having to do with like a, the development of a dementia um, and Alzheimer's or something of that kind because there's a disconnect from reality and a self-imprisonment because of that disconnect. But all those dead bodies, that was a legit thing. So there could have been war on that land. And, and so I don't really know for sure, but um, there was a, that was a lot. That was a lot of, uh, of old energy there but let's go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and relax and and let's see what let's see what happens okay oh boy oh gosh okay <laughs> sorry i'm just getting in the zone here <laughs> okay okay so so I'm walking on the crunch of, of leaves, but it's like crunch of fall leaves, but it's not leaves. It's actually the crunch of a house that was burnt down. And I see a man with a hose and he's hosing down the remnants of a structure of a house. And he too, uh, he's not a mad scientist looking character, but he's an older man with a whitish gray hair and beard. And he's standing in sort of like a, a knight robe that a man may have worn back in the day. It's an actual kind of dress. It's a full length dress. And it's got a light greenish color to it. And he just keeps hosing this down and hosing this down and hosing this down. And I tell him that it's okay to stop now. There's literally nothing, no smoldering, there's no fire, there's no smoke, there's nothing. It's just like a repetitious action that could have stopped a long time ago. And he has a very hard time stopping and letting go of the hose. He just feels it's, he just needs to keep doing this. He just needs to keep doing this. And the crunch is uh, old home materials. It's just crunching underneath my shoes. Mm. So at this time, I can't get him to stop with that action. And I keep seeing that beneath the ground, which uh, there's a, there's children that are kind of knocking. A, and there's like a trap door kind of thing. And so they're just knocking. And I can see little eyes and little kids when I look through this trap door. Oh, you just can't stop hosing this down. And I will say his frequency of energy is just very exhausting. Energy distortions. <laughs> so even though I can stand on the outside, look at him, and I, 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 you know, it's okay to put the hose down. Now that I'm walking into the actual structure of what's left of the structure to go check out this um, trap door, um, I can feel his energy is so distorting and extremely exhausting, extremely exhausting. And it's so distorting and so exhausting that the closer I get to this trap door, it's as if I'm walking into an entirely different dimension. 
and it's completely dark everywhere, but it feels like soils on the floor, the ground, the wall, on the ground, the, the walls, the ceiling. It's just like I'm in a cube of soils, compacted soils. This is a very uncomfortable place. I can feel an uncomfortable feeling here. And I, there's a candle and a small table. And a man with rotted flesh is sitting down. He's reading a book. And this is... I don't feel uncomfortable now so much as sad. Really, really sad. And it feels like there's just labyrinths of lost people. People have lost their way. Can't find their way. Just... And I just feel like people mindlessly walking around down here like a mouse in a maze. But there's just lots of just like bodies, like ghostly apparitions just kind of mindlessly going in directions. And it looks like a labyrinth. When I look on uh, sort of to the side wall, I look through the wall, I see this labyrinth. And this man is just reading this book like nothing's ever going on. He's also wearing kind of like a an older looking male pajamas, but his is a like a collared blue and white striped shirt with buttons and very like cozy pants. And he has a little hat on, I don't know, like a little hat and it has a little t tassel, a golden tassel that comes down as he reads. He looks very cozy. Hmm, he looks very into his book. Just a moment here. Water. Uh, I, I, I'm asking for water, 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 and uh, water to stream in. Water, 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 water. Um, water to stream in. I don't. I don't have. A, don't ask me why. But that. That's the next thing. Is water must come in here. It's like to clean it out, but let's just watch. I mean, I see water start to trickle in and there seems to be kind of an opening in the wall where now I can kind of experience the labyrinth more clearly, but it doesn't feel as desolate as it had just a little bit ago. The water's starting to trickle in and it's kind of moving around the floor here. Uh, water, 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 water. I need water, I need water, I need water, I need water, I need water. Uh, so it just kind of keeps like saying water, 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 water. Oh, like constantly water, 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 water. Maybe that's what that old man is trying to do. Water, here, take the water. <laughs> it's like a, a passionate obsession, a desperation for water here. And this man this won't stop hosing down the ground and the remnants of the walls of a burnt down house. It doesn't need the water. At least at, at that level. Give me a minute here just to catch up with everything. Okay, just a moment. I don't, I just, I just take the book out of this man's hand and I just throw it into the water that's coming in. I mean, it's, it's an ankle deep now. And I, I don't know why, but I feel angry and I start taking on some other persona and I, I take the man by his pajama shirt and I lift him up and I throw him and then there he goes and knocks down this little stool he's at and I just don't care. I feel like a wild rabbit animal. I'm just ripping. I just want to, I'm so angry. I'm just so angry, but I'm a person. And I feel like this is a justified anger. But this man reading the book has no idea. I mean, he's just, he's now in the water, but he just sort of just, he just has no idea. It's, it's like a mindless behavior happening here. Okay, this might get a little bit weirder. I am determined, by the way. I'm going to transform this place into a Garden of Eden. <laughs> by the end of this, it is going to be golden and shining and wonderful. I am determined to clear out as much of this energy as we can. All right, so I meant to, um, like my spirit guides are asking me to reiterate that I'm kind of, I'm walking into mind, some mindless energies, distortions, I can't think clearly kind of energies, mindless, you know, ghosts walking or like kind of, 
floating around a maze and there's lots of them. I still can't get to the kids that I saw. Uh, the man that won't let go of the water. The water that must get into this basement space. <clears throat> the anger that exists that has no... It's not, uh, it's not reconciled. And it also feels trapped, this anger does. And the more water that flows in, it gets dirtier and grosser. It doesn't feel cleaned out at all. It feels dirtier and grosser. And the, the thirst for water disappears. But now it just feels gross and it's just slimy and I don't really know what is lingering in this this water that's like half calf deep. <laughs> Not quite to my knees yet, but it's getting there. And it just keeps, it just keeps uh, rising slowly but surely. And I feel maybe there's leeches in here. Maybe there's gross things in here. I don't know. So I'm feeling kind of like creeped out. And none of this makes any sense. All right, next thing. I tell the water, thank you so much for being a part of this experience. I tell every one of these ghosts, I mean, this maze is big. This maze is no small space. It's big, a vast maze with lots of these mindless ghosts and I, I tell the maze thank you so much for your your gifts of learning and I tell the ghosts I say it's okay to become self-aware now and to decide if you prefer the maze or if you prefer something new I tell the man with the hose outside I tell him it is safe to stop running the water now. Your responsibility to the home is no longer needed. The water is no longer needed and the home has new plans, new dreams. Mm. He does uh, stop the water and rest the hose, but he seems to be choking right now. And like his heart is in his throat and he's choking on his heart. And he is choking on his heart. Uh, and he's somehow interconnected to this other pajama man uh, reading the book. So I can feel a weird relationship between their energies. I'm going to bring this other pajama man to the outside so they can stand by each other. He's still choking. I can't just take his heart and put it, you know, it's, it's not necessarily what he needs. So I got to keep investigating. So I am called to, the, there's the blue and white pajama man. There's the mint green pajama man. <laughs> How strange. And I tell the mint green pajama man with the heart in his throat, I tell him, you set, set down the hose, you stop the water. And I want you to just rest. Relax your breathing. Relax your heart. No more stress or anxiety. No more fear. Gosh, you just, it's like, the fear uh, hits him in a way where his heart then starts to beat in his throat and he just can't seem to breathe. And I asked this other pajama man with the blue and white stripes, I ask him what he thinks about this other man. Hmm. And I start to actually merge the two together to create one man. And this one man is wearing the same outfit but separates into two versions of himself also wearing the exact same outfit, which is a dark blue color. Shirt and pants. And they separate in a V shape. Hmm, I'm just going to let that be. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go back to looking at the house here. I gotta find some new stuff. This is some of the weirdest energy ever. I'm going to see the remnants of this house as opportunity. And I'm going to develop a consciousness of pure angelic love and light. And I'm welcoming this consciousness of angelic love and light um, to, to, guide, to feel guided to help in the repairing and the healing and the resurrection of the home space. And I'm visualizing walls uh, appearing and it being completely re rebuilt. If I need to see anything about these children, were they the ghost spirits? I have no idea. I can't get any more information. So if there is a need for that, then I welcome that awareness. Okay. Okay, hold on here. I'm, I'm visualizing walls and I'm putting angelic light into the walls. There's sorrow. Putting angelic light into walls, floor, windows, kitchen, living room, bedrooms, bathrooms, everything you could possibly need to build a house, a fresh new house. And I'm putting love into the resurrection of it. So I'm just going to keep putting love into this and anything that is uh, overwhelmed by it will just come out. All right. So we're just going to, it's kind of like um, pouring water. This is interesting. Pouring, pouring water into a gopher hole and then pushing the gopher out of the hole. And then um, I, my parents used to do this. So, <laughs> so there's something about pouring water into a hole in order to flush it out. That's what I'm thinking here. Now, maybe there's something more to this water and the, the hose and the water needing to get down there to flush it out. So, so we're going to continue to flush it out, but with love instead of water in that way. Okay. Okay, what is this now? <laughs> okay. Um, so I've built a new house. And it looks kind of like a, an older farmhouse in a way. <laughs> and there's a, a man that uh, appears in the front, the, the front of the home. Like I can see the, the front of the home with the front door and windows. And I can see him in the makeup of the wall. And it's still an echo of that one man. <laughs> And he's very attached and imprisoned is what it's like. And he needs to learn how to let go. <laughs> so it's a very good example of why we need to learn how to let go. Otherwise, you know, we get attached to things and then our soul now is a part of a house from hundreds of <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Who knows what? But, but this is, soul needs to learn how to let go. Okay. <laughs> We all need to work on it, whether you're human or spirit. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay. Um, I'm just watching right now. And he starts to become like a Tetris game and he moves shapes around. Uh, the walls, he's changing the, all the walls. There sort of looks like Tetris game shapes. And he's rebuilding all of the walls with shapes. But they're all white. And he starts to become whiter and whiter himself. He looked kind of gray. Gray outline. And he's growing a very long white beard and very thick long white hair. It's exhausting keeps rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding. He just keeps rebuilding. I tell him he has no more responsibility here. It's okay to let go. It's okay to let go. And I welcome his spirit to come out of the walls here. And come hang out. He just 
diffuses the conversation I'm having with him. I'm going to have to walk inside again. So I'm going to go through the front door of the ho the new version of your home that I just created, your energy home. We're making progress here, okay? So I'm walking into the front door so I can be within the home consciousness. And I will say there's some gruesome stuff going on here, but I don't know how to define it yet. I just feel it kind of slathered all over the interior walls and it's creepy. And I just simply, I just pull all of that energy out of the walls. I'm just pulling it into an orb here. It's, there's children still down in the trap door. And the walls look all black. Uh, there's bl patches of black all over them. And it just doesn't necessarily feel like a mold or a burnt, but it feels more like, um, like, a, like an infection. It feels like infection. Just a moment, the more I stand here and just, ex just continue to analyze, continue to accept and love, continue to be supportive. I'm starting to feel the walls uh, start uh, getting looser and less uh, sturdy, less uh, stuck together like, like the walls could turn to a dust and blow away and again we can start to rebuild and see what the next thing is until we finally I finally create a rebuilt energy version of your home and it and it stays and it starts to grow gardens and beautiful things like that that's when you know the home energy is uh, really refreshed okay okay there's change happening. The walls never turn to dust, but I don't feel the infection energy in the walls anymore. I still want to get to these kids, but it's it's starting to lighten up even with the reflection of the kids. Let me just stop everything for a minute uh, just so we can figure this out with the kids. That way you don't wonder. I open the trap door and I reach my hand in and a boy comes out. And he brushes off his pants and he looks around. He doesn't know why he's here. There's there's like 15, 20 kids down here. And there's a very creepy, dark tree down here. But it's the size of one of these children. It seems to walk around and it looks like a tree. But it looks like a kid a tree kid and it's the size of a kid but it's dark and twisted the boy seems to not know why where he was or why he was there or where he is now he just just but he is here now okay i'm gonna have to go down there and i Water starts to pour down in here. And I give this tree a hug. And... It's like a weird epiphany. It's like a, a sadness, but it's more of a, an epiphany, a sad epiphany, but also an important, meaningful epiphany, a, aware, an awareness. What is it aware of? I don't know other than the shift feels like this. And it has to do with this tree person that I just held like a baby. And they don't necessarily feel the need to leave or stay. They seem to be okay either way. But I say it's there's so much more to life than this dark underground place. 
and all the kids are going to go to a new place and I'm going to show them some beautiful new things. And I, I, when I think of kids, I, I really like to incorporate Mother Mary energy because Mother Mary energy is just the ultimate mom energy. It's just so fantastic. So I'm just, I'm just going to welcome her energy to participate uh, down here in this dark place. And with each one of these children that come out, and boys and girls, and uh, just a minute, there's just a lot of energy movement right now. A lot of the echo of help me and feeling lost, feeling like I can't get out feeling confused, feeling exhausted, feeling with that I've I, I've completely been drained of all energy. Okay, we're gonna work with Mother Mary again here. I'm just gonna bring Mother Mary energy into all the these children and into this little tree person. That, that has, I don't know who this is, but the energy was, was quite foul, but it's starting to shift a bit. <sighs> okay. Hmm. All right. It's getting very exhausting and it feels like this place is also another dimension and again the feeling of lost trapped souls and these souls have to do with children spirits like little kids souls did they die in this land did they just sort of gravitate here for some unexplainable reasons how do ghosts get in homes in the first place? How does this even happen? You could have a home that's brand new. It could attract a ghost. Like it just, energy attracts energy. So that's all I know. But uh, this is a big space. Again, much like that maze, but there's no maze here. And there's a longing to be set free. And it's more than just one uh, type of feeling here. It's like lots of... Uh, crayons in the crayon box that are all gray and white and black and that's what the energy feels like and it feels just like a big dimension of feeling lost but I also experience children energy of children here and this tree energy is shifting and it seems to be becoming just as lost as all the other spirits down here Mother Mary tells me to just be patient. She has a plan. And a heart starts to beat in the darkness. A red heart. And this is love. <sighs> Releasing energy here. Okay. Heart is beating, exhausting, very exhausting, but positive, very good. Uh, and as it beats, it starts to shine light, and I see more and more tree tree roots, actually. And the roots are, are going in every which way, and they're all over the place. It's like an underground root system. And these roots are also attached to other strange things that are attached to the walls, it's just a weird place. It's just a totally weird place. And Mother Mary tells me because these vines and stuff are attaching to the heart in order to distort the heart or rip the heart apart kind of thing. But she tells me to allow the love from this source heart 
This is the heart of God, all right? This is source love. It's infinite love. And just allow it to gently stream through all the roots that are connecting and to see the roots as thirsty mouths that haven't had uh, the nourishment of love in way too long. Um, so they aren't going to rip the heart apart. They just simply desperately need love and a, a light to light the way and love to light the way is what she says. And this is interesting and it's a very pure intention. I get a little sensitive about the crucifix mainly because I don't like a symbol of Jesus being tortured. It, it creates a lot of sorrow for me. But this uh, crucifix uh, is actually of a, a, a pure love. And it has abs no reflection of uh, suffering in a way that feels wounded. It's actually um, share expressing love, the crucifixes. And uh, so I see crucifixes um, of pure love and Jesus style energy starting to flow through here as well in order to mend this, this space. Just absolutely pure love. So another energy shift. And there seems to be, this is a big space, okay? And so I can only see so much, but the light is attracting more thirsty mouths, all right? And there seems to be more and more coming into the center where the heart is, where we're standing. There just seems to be more and more and more and more and more. This is attracting more thirsting mouths. But it almost seems like bugs uh, kind of being attracted to the light. But instead of the light hurting them, the light is healing them. But they can't seem to remember. They can't seem to figure it out. They can't seem to think anymore. They don't understand their own habits or behaviors. They're totally just kind of like, um, they're like dead energies without a lot of thought, a lot of understanding, a lot of ability to, for personal reflection. It's just kind of apparitions floating around. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of this. A lot of this. Mm. Mother Mary tells me to be patient. <sighs> the love is still flowing, but it's getting very thick and dense in here. It's almost getting um, like it's building upon building upon building upon building upon itself. <sighs> it's just still it's getting denser. So we'll just bring Archangel Michael in. Let's just have some fun. Let's bring some fun people in. <laughs> it's always better to work with a team, right? So just bring Archangel Michael in. And I welcome him to help neutralize the dense energy. Archangel Raphael is showing up already and he's funny. And he's sort of putting on a show for us. And uh, he's very, very silly. He's very funny. He's, a, he's, a, he's like a... He likes to dress up like a girl and uh, he does very funny skits <laughs> to make us all laugh and feel very cheerful. And all that laughter starts to fuel all the love that is here. And it continues to ignite um, the light and the love of what we are sharing as a family of love, right? Family of love to support our friends that have kind of the apparitions of souls that have gotten extremely lost along the way. So we just are here to help. We're here to help. And I bring in lots of others, um, hum human beings that don't, that, that don't just like <laughs> appearing random people that I don't even know. There's a person, there's another human being. They're all like people coming in here. And there's different ones. Like there's people who are um, working with plant <laughs> medicines and tinctures um, and that are, that are sharing Mother Earth energies, human beings. Um, this is all part of my, some part of my soul's dream in order to heal this place. Um, there's the uh, souls that love colors that are coming in to share the rainbow of their heart. Um, but they're human beings come to work together. Uh, and there's a big old bonfire developing and it's pure love and magic and spirit. Uh, and it's bringing activity and life here to this place. And it's starting to really break down uh, the structure of what is trying to uphold this dimension. 
And I can feel it breaking down. I can feel it totally breaking down. Let's get some Buddha energy in here, shall we? Let's get some Zen. Let's get some gongs going. Let's get some singing bowls, right? Let's get some choir music in here. Let's get um, some tribal dancing in here. Let's just get some more fun stuff going in here, right? Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's get happiness. Let's get some kids artwork down here. Let's do that. Okay, it's just really loosening up a lot of stuff. Okay. There's a so this dimension is vast, but it's all it's it's actually quite an amazing progress here. There's uh, weird stuff coming up and out of the ground, like big, giant skeletal beings. And uh, they're like old soldiers. And they're, they carry very heavy, massive swords. Very heavy, massive swords. And uh, Mother Mary has a heart for everyone. And so I start to see hearts uh, develop literally in every single apparition, every skeletal being, everybody. Um, she has a heart for everyone. And there's just pure love here, pure love and support from all different dimensions. Oh, let's just bring in Ra, you know, like the sun god. Like, let's make it fun, right? Let's bring in all different types of love here. Oh, this doesn't hurt me, by the way, but it's a lot of energy, like uh, like water falling over my face and just coming out the seams. <laughs> That's what it feels like. So it's just all moving, and this is all breaking up the old energies, all right? It feels, it's like super awesome progress going on down here. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Hearts, 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 appearing everywhere. Ah, there's an angel of death, and this angel of death is uh, the angel of life. So, um, has come to help the souls, uh, lead the souls home. And that's what this is like. Uh, so, there's other angels coming in here with special jobs to help lead these souls home. And there's a lot of silvery energy developing here. Ah. <sighs> A lot of rainbow, a lot of love, a lot of Mother Earth energies. We're healing, healing, healing. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna just let that continue to do its thing. And then I'm gonna I'm just gonna let that do its thing over here, and then I'm just gonna see what the next thing is. So that can be infinitely in progress over there. I don't have to stay with it the whole time. So we'll just let that infinitely progress, and then let me see what the next inspiration is here. Hmm. Okay, I keep thinking about apple trees. And orchard of apple trees. And uh, I love orchards of apple trees. Just so you know, <laughs> I work with this image a lot. And uh, I find it refreshing to my senses. And I start to see orchard, an orchard of apple trees starting to grow all over the land here. And the roots of the apple trees growing into this dimension um, and healing it. It's, it's like absorbing uh, the nutrients of the old energies, okay? It's just like dead bodies. The trees love that stuff. They just absorb and it becomes food and they thrive. You know, the carbon dioxide. The trees drink that stuff up all day long. They give us oxygen. So um, trees are, energy trees are amazing in energy worlds. So they soak up uh, the old energies, and transform it into new oxygen energies to breathe, okay? So all these apple trees are scattered. It's like the most massive orchard of all time. And their, their roots are growing into this dimension. And they're absorbing all the old matter. 
uh, and just processing it to clean it out. It's like an infected wound within Mother Earth kind of thing and within your home space. Uh, it's just wild here. Okay. Super amazing progress. Uh, I love you, trees. <laughs> I just feel like saying that over and over again. I love you, trees. I love you so much, trees. <laughs> you do a great job, trees. And uh, dogs start to come. And the dogs are very happy. And they're loyal. And um, I feel like uh, they're helping souls as well to go, go to heaven. And so it's like very happy, affectionate uh, dogs of all different breeds and different kinds are barking and running in. And they're, uh, there's something about helping souls getting get to heaven. And the dogs are helping the souls get to heaven. <laughs> I've never seen that before, just so you know. But I couldn't imagine why not. <laughs> That's so adorable and wonderful isn't it the animals are helping the souls come home you know so cool ah it's a marvelous feeling for me but as love continues to spread its magic it also lifts to the surface new splinters and wounds okay so so that's why that's why you know even being a human being um, when we heal the old hurt, so we attract more love. And the love comes in and it brings up new self-awareness, which can feel like a hurt we got to work on. And then we release it and then we bring in more love. So same thing with healing. So I'm healing this space with lots of love and then it sort of brings to the surface another wounded challenge, okay? So I see this diamond. It's a black diamond in the center of the orchard. And a very tall, skeleton-like man. And he kind of em emanates that he's an evil guy. But I'm not certain of that. He just looks like he is. But I can't feel that out just yet. So let me just continue to analyze here. So this diamond is, is, a, is a portal. My lord, you're, you're, this house has so many, uh, I mean, it's, there's so many connections to so many places. Okay. And it's a doorway. But I tell him that that doorway is not for him. And he says that he knows. But that this doorway needs to be healed. Because it needs to be closed is what he says. But I don't like the idea of closing a doorway because it needs to, it just, because shut doors, I don't like shut doors. They create stagnation. They create, um, so I don't want to close the door. I just want to heal it or transform w what this is all about. So there is no such thing as a door related to it. Never was, never will be kind of thing. It's just totally cycled all the way around and it's all new stuff now. He smiles and he appreciates that response. And he isn't an evil, m evil man at all. He's sort of uh, emulating that. But the more that I feel him out, he reminds me of Archangel Metatron because Archangel Metatron likes to uh, put on disguises to see um, how you will react to him. So if he looks like an evil person, will you treat him like one? Uh, so you have to not just go by what it looks like, you have to go by what it feels like. So he shows me that he's put, putting some sacred geometry shapes. <laughs> um, he's using sacred geometry um, in order to heal the portal here. And he's really happy to participate in the healing as well. I actually asked him to come in. Um, in the midst of all of this happening and I kind of got lost in the midst of all this happening and then here he appears so he's actually thanking me for calling him in and I was like oh yeah I, I meant to have you come in here all along and here you are hmm. and he shows me the sacred geometry is helping with this whatever this is about and then he's taking uh this diamond shape with the sacred geometry within it like within the heart of it 
than the heart of this portal. And he's taking all the lines and he's just uh, kind of scrunching it on down and then it, it feels like it's complete. Let me just see. Hmm. Okay. So, just a moment here. There's just, I just don't know, I just don't know everything just yet. It's just becoming very quiet and peaceful. It's so quiet and peaceful that at this point, I just, the trees aren't, the trees have uh, done their work, so even the trees are starting to dissolve. And I don't feel so much of the energy of that dimension. I don't feel so much of the necessity of Archangel Metatron and that uh, portal. I feel that it's all starting to dissolve in its own way and come to a completion. <sighs> I'm just going to let that happen. It's just getting very, very peaceful. I'm not convinced that, that there isn't something I'm going to run into still, but boy, is this an improvement. I will tell you that from the first session, that was really hard. Energetically, on the scale of extreme energies, that was really up there. Uh, because that distorted energy was very hard to break it down, to dissolve it, but you can. You can eventually dissolve anything. And now in this session, I can tell that the distorted energy is far reduced and what it once was. So huge improvement there. Also huge improvement of healing all that stagnant old energy, old souls mindlessly attracted to this dimension, closing portals. <laughs> so healing all of that and really neutralizing it and filling it with love to transform the experience from something overwhelming and to something absolutely uh, abundantly joyful <sighs> all right i tell the universe okay so what is the next thing that i can do here <sighs> hmm Well, this land and the home that is your childhood home that still stands, um, on the energy side of things, it doesn't know how it wants to rebuild its identity just yet. So it's kind of uh, behaving like kind of a barren landscape, but it's a fresh new, uh, new start. And it's not quite sure how it wants to express itself And it feels lonely. It feels a sense of emptiness. It feels so sad sometimes. And I ask this energy, uh, what would make you happy? What would bring happiness to you? And she, it's a she, and she says memories, happy memories. And uh, she wants me to build a home full of happy memories. That's interesting because it's a childhood home. And that's interesting. What, what, what's up with the children in the basement? I mean, there's something about everything. You know, there's no coincidences about anything. But she tells me she wants me to build a home with lots and lots of happy memories. Happy memories that make her, that inspire her to smile and feel so warm and bright in her heart. And she wants to feel that. She wants to feel that. And I tell her that she's too cooped up in the house because I start to see walls and floors and ceilings like a house manifesting here. And it looks, it's cozy. It looks really cozy. And it's got kind of an olden day feel to it, more like a cottagey expression. Um, and it's quaint and cute inside, and there's lots of pictures on the walls and uh, and memories. Ah, it feels like memories here, but I also feel that um, her spirit is too cooped up. 
too cooped up inside and needs to enjoy the outdoors. Because in an odd way, she becomes attached to the home as well. And that attachment to the home separates her from other experiences that she can have outside that would be very healing and healthy. And so I grow a garden for her. So she doesn't have to go far because right now it's just like a field of grass and dirt. And so I'm growing a garden for her. Big, beautiful trees. A really warm and loving, uh, beautiful pathway through the woods to just enjoy the, the energy of the woods. And the forest flowers. And I, I help remind her what it feels like to be a kid again. And she, she starts to fill with a lot of energy. And because she still feels her age, she's an older woman. And then she feels the, uh, the childlike self. Uh, she, it sort of overwhelms her emotionally to feel the difference. And there's something about her and the color red. I keep seeing the color red. I, like I think of Little Red Riding Hood when I think of the little girl. <sighs> Just a moment here. Lots of tiredness, lots of sleepiness. The little girl is still like like a, a right here standing next to this older woman. And I tell her to let go of age because you're not old. You're a young girl. You're a spring chicken. She starts to cry and because it's so moving for her. It's, uh, it touches her heart. And she starts to feel so much brighter like Ra, the sun god, is starting to fill her heart with sunlight and feelings of bright days. And it just feels like there's uh, some gloom around her head and some just gloomy clouds around this little red riding hood girl's head. But her heart is full of sunlight, and I do some things to uh, lift this cloud. And I give her permission to feel freedom of self-expression, and freedom to follow her heart, and freedom to allow the joy in. And she does do a cartwheel. And she kind of giggles, like, I don't know where what happened there. <laughs> I don't know why I just did a cartwheel. <laughs> some, some sort of childlike essence just got into her. She's starting to let go of the old age feeling and starting to feel freer. And uh, the curiosity of a child is, bringing, is coming back to her senses. And she's wanting to go find treasures in the field. Like an old skeleton key, she shows me. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> We've come a long way to start thinking about skeleton keys. <laughs> like, okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Boy, there's a lot of mystery. Still some mystery. This is a whole new layer of mystery, okay? <laughs> because I see the little girl with having found the skeleton key in the prairie. All these flowers growing and she finds this key. But it's a key to her own soul is what it is. And when she, she wants to use a key to open a doorway. And it's kind of bringing me back to the portal that we just healed. Uh, and so there's a question here of, um, are we sure about that? She's young and curious, so of course we're sure about that. <laughs> uh, 
And she has a door in front of her and she puts the key in and unlocks it. And it's like skeletons in the closet, but she's not afraid of them. And the door is slightly above where she stands. So she would have to actually kind of lift herself up and into it. And this was part of her role to open this door. So in some version of reality, this is a, a true story, okay? That, how would the best way to define it? Because as a human being, we think, well, the human little girl found this key, opened this magical door. Wait, what? <laughs> but yes, in some version of reality, maybe it was in a sleep state. I don't know. But in some version of true reality, uh, a childlike girl, a girl, all right, uses a skeleton key to open a doorway. And the doorway um, opens up to some stuff. So let's just, let, let me just keep watching here. She's not afraid of the doorway, but it never closes. It's just the doorway's open. And I keep being told that this was uh, important that this doorway was opened. And I see lots of skeletons uh, at the, the base, and it's a staircase that goes upward, but lots of skeleton bodies. And, and they're even when she opens the door, they even kind of fall out a bit. And the door starts to go higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, up, 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 and away. But it's still there. I see it in the clouds still. I don't know what to make of this. She doesn't either, so she's just skipping. She's like, it never even happened. She's just skipping. I asked Metat Archangel Metatron, what is this all about? Is this a good thing? Is this something we want? I mean, is this the past? Is this the present? Is this the future? What is this? What's the timeline here? He says, if this is the past, then it is already caught up with itself in the present and in the future. If this is the present, hmm, well, let me let me see what he says about that. He smiles and he says, if this is the present, then I've already closed the door. <laughs> okay. He's just sort of alluding to don't worry about it. <laughs> just let these strange things, uh, these strange matters, just let them go. <laughs> it's going to be okay. That's <laughs> what he says. It's like what he's saying. And I, and I have, I've already let it go. And I don't feel any doorway or skeleton key at all anymore. And I feel cheerful, and I feel like all of these yellow flowers, these flowers growing, it's nice. Is this the Garden of Eden? It looks like a vast prairie of flowers, and there's big trees around, but it's more prairie than trees, at least where, what I'm looking at right now. And there's definitely a new stability in the energy of this home way more beautiful new stability and I don't feel the old woman and I don't feel her connection with the, the little girl I don't feel the little girl anymore I don't feel anything to do with that I don't feel a sadness I don't feel longing for memories I don't feel longing for um, somebody to help me become happy again I don't, I don't feel any of that hmm major progress still so where am i at on time here okay so let me see what i i just still feel kind of like a density um inside this cottagey looking home that's just sort of manifest um in this prairie field uh there's a bit of density in there i'm just gonna i'm just gonna allow the home to completely open up like a kid's dollhouse and just let all the density air out. This is creating a bit of a, like, it's exhaustion, but a huge movement around my head. And I started to feel spir sparkling gems. 
I mean, the house is totally open up and it seems to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But I just keep looking at emeralds, sa blue sapphires, um, rubies. There's a diamond-esque energy here, but I definitely see emeralds, blue sapphires, and red rubies here. I guess I'm supposed to use these energy. I'm gonna work with diamond too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna place emeralds in the energy world. I'm gonna place energy emeralds, all right, um, throughout the what would be the foundation of the home. Okay, we're just gonna layer it up with with layers of of energy emeralds, layers of energy blue sapphires, and layers of of energy uh, rubies. And we're going to place diamonds in every single corner. And let's uh, fill it with some citrine, too. Who doesn't like citrine? <laughs> and some rose quartz, you know? Let's fill it with lots of fun energies, yeah? <laughs> let's put some salt lamps in here. <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> some jade. Some amethyst. Some tourmaline, some black tourmaline, some onyx. <laughs> wow, it's really getting uh, quite, I mean, I feel this is quite powerful. I mean, it's like the, the whole, this whole new structure of the home, which I don't like to define as structure at all, but it's just the essence of, of energetic s stones of love and healing and earth energy. And it's just an emanating, this uh, vibration of amazingness Ugh, in every direction. Um, above, below, uh, and all, you know, around, within, in all sacred directions. And there's, this is so interesting. What's up with all the different uh, people? But there's some Native American folks that uh, start to appear uh, on the land and they uh, put sacred fires around the, the house. And there, there's little fires, little like actual campfires. And there's a, a Native American standing at each, each one and they're all smiling. And they're... Um, this is a sacred fire. This is a sacred protective energy fire. <laughs> it's really cool. There's a fairy, a very large fairy, and she's uh, from her heart. It's like, I love you from the bottom of my heart. And then all these butterflies come out of her heart. <laughs> and she's sort of spinning around and around, very lovely, um, very kind of like a ballerina of joy and fairiness. And all these butterflies are just going in every direction, just spiraling around and around and around. Oh, it feels like a brand new day. It feels like a totally brand new day. Why don't we get that Garden of Eden going, shall we? Like, we got the prairie, we got some woods. Let's just add some more Garden of Eden type energies here, shall we? I think so. All right, so we're going to grow a Garden of Eden on the inside of the home, okay? So it's going to be a sacred, healing Mother Earth energy. Beautiful flowers and exotic plants and love, <laughs> vines and all types of beautiful Garden of Eden energy. <laughs> oh, I love it. And all of the crystals and the gems and, and the earth energy welcome anything that feels out of balance, feels a, a struggle. Um, that it can heal it now, that it can transform those energies, um, and that it wants to. All of the this energy wants to. Hmm. Wow, this is quite a landmark of love right now. <sighs> all right, that's all I can share, but boy, was that ever fun. I'm so excited. I'm so glad I... I was determined this time to get there to the end and to see that your home was really bright and vibrant and transformed. I feel this is quite a powerful uh, accomplishment here. 
And I'm confident too, the next time you visit this childhood home, um, that you will notice a change in the energy too. I'm quite certain that you will. <sighs> wow. That might even be a really nice place for you to visit because it could, it's, it's a healing sanctuary in there. So you can go in there and you can just uh, soak in the energies and it's a healing sanctuary in there. I mean, you should open the door and, and, and let lots of people in to heal because it's like a super healing place now. <laughs> it wants to heal people. <laughs> it wants to spread the love. <laughs> it's really neat. Uh, so anything having to do with the pajama men... That has that is completely cleared. Just so you know, it kind of went into weird direction. But Archangel Metatron sent me a really quick message to let you know um, that that's actually okay. There's no, there's nothing else related to that. It's all taken care of, is what he's saying. He doesn't want you to to focus on anything because it's all taken care of. All of this energy is just totally transformed. <sighs> Okay, that's what I got. Yay, cool, cool follow-up session. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. All right, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I hope you all have a great day.